This is the Asus Chromebook Flip CX5601. Yep, and it. it's a large, large screen Chromebook that uh, has been out for a while. It was announced in January at CES. Yeah. This is the one that's available out of nowhere. at Best Buy, correct? Yeah. The yeah. Core i3. Core i3, 12th yep. gen, 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of internal storage. It's a monster. Big it's a keypad. Big, yeah, it's a numeric keypad, upward firing speakers. It's like in the, in the hinge, the speakers there. Um, yeah, 16 by 10 aspect ratio at 16 inches. Um, full HD, so that was a that's a little bit of a knock for me right now. Like that size of a screen, that's a lot of screen real estate for full HD. Like you, you can see it from regular working distance. You can tell like uh, it's just should a little. It, what should it be like two point two K? Yeah, it should be just be a quad HD screen um, all day, but it's not. And so uh, it is what it is. It's it's affordable. Um, and so I didn't talk about that in the in the video, but you know, realizing it's like. What I think like four ninety nine or something. Yeah, the value proposition. Four forty nine or four fifty nine. I don't know. I don't know how much yeah, I want to say it's like five twenty nine, but it's already gone on sale. Yeah, you could get it for like four thirty or something. Yeah, like that. The, so Which, that that's a big deal because you know we treated this video a little bit different, um, and we're gonna kind of see how people react to it and and maybe do um, like what I, what we would consider like main device unboxings in this way, um, devices that we intend to review, for instance. And so the, the montage at the beginning with the unboxings done, and then it's like, here's some literal impressions. And then I, I kind of hone it down to six. We list out the specs, boom, those are out of the way. And it's three things I like, three things I don't, um, uh, impressions-wise so far. And the, the things I really like are uh, the speed. And it's the first i3 we've had, the 12th mm -hmm. Gen i3. Um, and yes, the, the GPU isn't as good as the i5 and i7 in this generation. It's not Iris XE graphics. It's, it's, I think they still call them Iris, but it's like Iris yeah, HD graphics. Yeah, it's, it's the Intel UHD. I think they're up to 630 now or something yeah. like that. So. So, it's their, so it's fine. Like for Chromebook tasks, completely fine. Um, the only thing that if you were looking at getting, uh, uh, getting into Steam gaming when that launches or like when Luma Fusion launches later, Assuming it really leverages the GPU, it, a, a different Chromebook would be better for those final renders. But um, for, for everything I've thrown at it, no issues whatsoever. And it was so fast feeling that we ran some benchmarks and did a, a, a post about this too. Like it was beating the Core i5 and i7s that we have here in the office in some benchmarks. It was like it wasn't like oh it's it's only a few thousand marks you know lower than these. It's it's the same or sometimes better if I depending on when I ran it. Like I I could. It, it would beat the i7 in octane and speedometer sometimes so which is crazy because pre yeah previous gens like the i3 i5 gap was pretty big and then the i5 i7 gap was a little bit smaller but for them to be on par the only boost you're getting in the bigger chips is the the gpu and i think the hyper threading is a little different I think yeah it's going to be hyper threading because i don't think the i3 does uh multi-core i have to double check that yeah i'm not, sure. I'm not really sure but Either way, I mean, using it with a quad HD extended monitor and doing all the stuff I normally would do, just crazy fast. Like, never ever thinks about doing anything. And so, um, I, I really do like that. I like the speed, and I like the fact that the i3 delivers that kind of speed and performance because it means cheaper Chromebooks are just faster, which is awesome. Uh, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of NVMe means that it's going to keep up with with everything you're going to want to do. Um, keyboard is excellent. Um, but the CX-5 from last year was excellent, so that's not surprising. It feels like the same keyframe. Um, obviously, it's a huge keyboard, so it's nice and spaced mm -hmm. out. Super clicky, great travel. It's excellent. Um, and the screen size is awesome. Like having that, I mean, you, you have the exact same size on the MacBook. Um, and when you take it by itself. Yeah, that's over it, there. Right. Mm -hmm. And when it's sitting there by itself, like. That's enough screen real estate to like get super duper productive oh, yeah. and like not really feel the need for an external display if you didn't didn't want have one. Have to have one, yeah. Um, and so having some more resolution would take that to the next level. So that became kind of a that that part's good. The bad parts are 1080p doesn't take full advantage of the the sheer actual sure. physical size of the screen because I don't have enough pixels to. To, we, we tried to scale. Get, yeah, we tried getting a shot of like some of the icons, the app icons, but like it was hard to get on camera. Yeah. But looking at it, you can you can, you can see you can some see pixels, pixelated. and it's like, eh, and that doesn't bother great. me so much as as much as it's just when you have that much physical screen real estate, that many square inches or square centimeters, however you measure, like 
it's not as useful when the resolution's low. Right. So if it's a higher resolution, I can scale it in different ways. And, and you know, I take like 14 inch Chromebooks a lot of times, like uh, 1080p ones. You know, when you go all the way out to the native resolution, things are a little bit small. But right. if that's the only screen I've got and I want to split screen some stuff and I'm okay dealing with some smaller text on screen, I can make that option and do that and actually utilize my screen real estate more. You can't go past 1080p on this thing. So it's like, cool. I mean, this is the size of things are, and this is just how it's going to be. And so I feel like it's underutilized in that way. Uh, but the, uh, the screen, I didn't believe <laughs> Asus said it's 300 nits. I was like, there's no way, no way. This is 300 nits measured it. It is it's 300 nits, but it's, it's like so yellow. Crazy it's warm. The, isn't I think it? it's the color. The color temperature is what makes it look dimmer. Yeah, it is. It takes away like you never get those pops of bright white. So right. whether it's yeah. on a background or, uh, it's on a website Everything or whatever, a little muted. Yeah. It has that Edison bulb tip yeah. to yes. it. It's yeah. very, it's yeah. very, yeah. like, which it's, is it's great in a yellowest. coffee shop, but not good on a Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> it is the yellowest screen yeah. I think I've ever seen on a Chromebook. And so mm-hmm. that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, Especially because, when you, ha- when you had it right below your, uh, your oh monitor God. and going back and forth. I, I and that's moving just a, a Google search page yeah. from one to the other. And you're just like, Whoa. Oh my God, that's and, like white and super yeah. tobacco stain. Yeah. And that's the sort of stuff. we'll. <laughs> <laughs> that's the sort of stuff we'll get in the full review for this yeah. one we just got some nice kind of glamour shots but you can still see it in the glamour shots i think you can see it in the in the thumbnail even oh yeah i mean we we edited the thumbnail a little bit to kind of clean it up and yeah. even still you can kind of see it and i'm like don't like let's not bring the color temperature down in the image and fix right. it like that is what it looks like so yeah so you know those things normally uh warm like the pixel book go is, has a warm screen um comparatively but yeah. it's not, not that so warm. warm it's not so warm that it's distracting this yeah. one even without any other screens in front of me i see it and i'm like Ugh. yeah and i just can tell it's right. just not white you, right. know, you never get white right um on the screen and so that's a bit of a bummer um the trackpad surface is nice it's large and it works fine. Like, I haven't had any problem with it working. I think so. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, or it might be like one of those recycled deals. Uh, I don't think it's glass. But it, regardless what it's made of, it's the surface is great. It feels great. Um, but the click mechanism, it's not flopping around or anything, but it's like hollow and uh, cheap. Super cheap. Uh, like, super duper duper cheap. And so something could be out of place on ours. Um, it might it makes me bad. think of Acer, and no knock against Acer, but they've always made that 15.6 inch budget device that's at Walmart all the time. That click mechanism, that's that, what it feels like. Yeah, that oof. hollow, weird, and just yeah. every time you click it, it's like, God, is this going to break? Like, I feel like it might break. Put your finger through it. Um, <laughs> oh. And, and on that note, like the whole bottom of the chassis is made of plastic, which as was the CX-5, I think. It might have had. I'm pretty sure it had it's aluminum. Plastic. I'm pretty sure we thought it might be aluminum and bottom, we were, and it yeah. was plastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's firm, ish. Um, I noticed in the video when I was holding it up, like you see you a pretty see decent yeah. bow, mm-hmm. but it it's also very poorly weighted. So you got an Screen's aluminum super lid, heavy. glass <laughs> screen, and it just if, if you, even if you hold it back for like where the vents are, it wants to almost turn over. Yeah, like it's super that's... top heavy. Um, and if you I mean if you go to pick the thing up from the bottom corner, it's just so massive. Feels like, like it's bending backwards. Yeah. yeah, but like if you grab it with two hands, it doesn't feel bendy, and it doesn't feel yeah. terrible on the desk. And so, it's, it's such a large device. You would probably most often grab it with two hands anyway, yeah, because <laughs> it's just so big. But uh, like I wish but, on those, like if you're gonna build it with plastic, like just do a reinforced square frame yeah. around the outside. Sure, you know, with some sort of metal. It doesn't even have to look good. It's just a frame, you know, that just gives it a bunch of rigidity. But it wasn't even the rigidity that was a problem. It's just the fact that it's all plastic makes the weighting really weird. Uh, so when it's open, it almost feels like it wants to tip over. She put uh, weights in them like golf clubs so you can yeah, adjust sure. them. I yeah. like mine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then, I like mine a little, little, yeah. little. Uh, I, tend draw, I tend to draw a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> a little, little key. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's like the, the mix of that, and then they use that whatever I can't remember, like something velvet or whatever on the CX five obsidian velvet. Obsidian velvet. And it was like this soft touch plastic on the top, and even though it was plastic, I was like, oh, this feels nice. And you know, when you're typing and your hands are on, it's like, oh, this is nice. And my wife's got the CX five, and she's had it for well over a year, and it's. Like it's held up. It hasn't. I figured it might wear in. And like shiny I figured spots it on would it. stain. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's black, so it's yeah. it's held up really well. I mean, for a, a Chromebook that just gets beat around the house, basically. Uh, but this this doesn't have that same. It's plastic, and I'm sure it's probably the same stuff. It just doesn't have the textured finish, so it, it feels decidedly plastic mm-hmm. under your hands. 
which just makes it feel a little cheap. It's crazy because yeah. on the original CX-5, those things made it feel more premium than it was. It had it's it, like it, it was like a plastic. device above its above its own price tag. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I got I got to spend some more time with it. Um, <coughs> yeah. You know, so there's some things that I like. I, I love the speed. I really do. The port selection is awesome. The you know performance of it, especially when I'm hooked into a an, an external monitor. I mean, that thing yeah. just flies. It's sure. great. Um, and you know, like the screen viewing angles are fine, or whatever. It's just never, ever, ever going to flip that thing into tablet mode. I don't know. I did for the B roll, and even trying to you're watching a ball <laughs> trying game to flip it around. Yes, I was yeah, like, if you put it on. The, yeah, if you were going to set it maybe yeah. in presentation mode yeah. or yeah. something. Yeah, um, yeah, but making a, I, I would just assume a Chromebook that size make a clamshell. It put a nice, a really nice hinge in it, so that the screen just holds up better because yeah. it's and you poke on the screen too it's a little floppy but again that's the weighting issue like it's just it's just poorly weighted and all of those things come together and make it feel a little bit cheap and it goes back to everything we've been talking about in this podcast of manufacturers making devices that just aren't real considered like yeah we had this piece and well that was here and i get it there's budget lines and price cuts and all that stuff and, mm-hmm. and it's affordable so you what, gotta remember the price that point? I think yeah. it's five and five cam? 49. Yeah. So six forty nine is what was shown and the one's on sale for five twenty nine. So you're like that's really cheap for a Chromebook that does this much, but the screen's a big knock. Like that's that's tough. Are there any that's settings tough. or are there any is there anything in Chrome OS to no, adjust? No, they need to. They need to add that. I think that would be Pretty the useful. night light's the only thing they yeah, have, but they, they don't have right. anything to adjust. They color need to adjust, have an RGB adjustment. Yeah, just a simple, uh, you know, just a color like temperature a, a, slider, a calibration type thing. Like yep. they they do that in Mac. Like you can do calibration. Yeah, I mean, Windows and stuff. has had it too forever. Like it's not something that's that rare, and especially with the variants we're going to get with Chromebooks with so many people making them. Like. Right, and they're working on a lot screens. of other stuff too, like uh, variable refresh rates and adjustable, you know, more hertz and all that stuff. There's no reason for them not to have some base. Yeah, like just fill an op-ed piece. There yeah, you go. But yeah. I mean, seriously, just make it like just put a slider in there and it's warmer, cooler. Yeah. I mean, that's sure. simple. Yep. And give me RGBs so yeah. I can yeah. I can push reds. You know, let somebody else do it for me probably. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but it's uh yeah. I mean the for the price. I mean if it's on sale for five twenty nine. Yeah. That's a, you're getting a lot of Chromebook and especially if it's a device that you want to, you, I think you had said this in the impressions, you know, kind of a around the house type device. Uh, it'd, it'd make a great you know? device for the house. Hey everyone. Thanks so much for watching this clip of the Chromecast. If you want to see the full episode, it's linked down in the description. This was just a clip, just a little segment of the full Portion. show. Yeah. If you want to watch the full Snapshot. show, just a, nugget. just a little nugget of the full show. Uh, so you can go check that out. Click the link in the description. But we appreciate you watching this one. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up. Go on there and click subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get an alert when we put out another clip just like this one. Okay, we'll catch you in the next one. See you.